Hey all, it's new. I want to welcome you to another 100 maps farming session. Oh yeah, we're doing it again. This time I'm going to be farming up some 8 mod maps. So I already came out with a session like this, but didn't do all winged and didn't do elevated compasses. So this is the maximum juice, all winged, all elevated in fact, uh, compasses for farming 8 mod corrupted maps, as well as divination cards as usual. In essence, I'm swapping out the Reliquary Scarab and I'm swapping out Beyond for the 8-mod Sextant, which you can see here, and Cartographer Scarab. It's interesting to me because a lot of people really started favoring this farm. I've noticed there's a robust market of 8-mod maps buying and selling on the TFT, Bulk Trading, Discord, this league, I mean, people really started getting the memo. It began to become a little popular last league. It's really taken off uh, this time. And for some reason, or whatever reason, a lot of people seem to just favor farming with the 8-mod compass rather than trying to get uniques. I guess people think uniques aren't that valuable this league. It's not really my belief, but uh, at any rate, I'm going to do it this time around because you may not got the memo, but I'm going to be farming a thousand Crimson Temple maps again. I seem to be doing this every other league. If I have a really good reason to do it, uh, I, I will do it. And I do have a pretty good reason to do it because we got the whole ghosting thing here. So I want to see what uh, I can do, what I can accomplish with a thousand Crimson Temple maps. Uh, probably going to be maximum juice on that as well. So this is essentially the precursor to kicking off a thousand Crimson Temple maps. I'm going to be farming up, my goodness, a lot more than a thousand map. How many maps am I going to get out of uh, this hundred map session? I don't know, but it's going to, I can promise you it's going to be way more than a thousand. Which means I'm going to get my picking uh, when it comes to selecting those maps. I don't know if I have the dump tabs for this. We're going to try to fit all this in four major dump tab. Probably going to have to unlock some of the smaller ones as well. You can already see I still have some maps left over to sell and or to use. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Let's get started on this. I'm going to start trying to keep these videos a little shorter as well. I've noticed uh, they're creeping up like one hour long. I don't like it when they get an hour long. I want them to be a little closer to maybe 30 minutes long. Uh, so in the spirit of trying to do that, I'm going to jump right in. Uh, with the Scarabs, we have Winged Torment. Winged Ambush, Winged Divination, and again, summing out Winged Reliquary for Cartographer. That means we're going to have a lot less uniques, a lot less uh, conversion loot. Not going to be getting anywhere near the same amount of uh, value out of the uh, rarity that I have on gear. Uh, but that's okay. Um, on a high note, for anyone out there who doesn't really have a rarity character or not much magic find at all, or maybe just pure quant character, this is going to be a great farm uh, for you. But you I think you're going to want to have some quantity on gear. I don't know, probably at least 40-50% quantity on gear to justify going winged. <laughs> but even with zero quant on gear, you probably do gilded. All gilded and non-elevated and still come out pretty well, as a matter of fact. Because maps are are not impacted by player quantity or rarity at all on the drops. The divination cards are, of course. Uh, but maps completely immune to player quantity and rarity. Still affected by area quantity rarity, monster quantity rarity, uh, which is why ghosting has a major impact. Of course. And then we got the elevated uh, strong box corrupt rare. Elevated in rage. So uh, corrupt rare strong box like one to two divines depending on the day uh, per compass. This one is ten divines. Pretty solid ten divines here. Uh, this one is less than a divine now. Uh, magic pack size. And maps found in your areas of eight mod modifiers. I usually don't run elevated. There's no advantage to running elevated here. But for whatever reason... Uh, the price has been fluctuating a lot on these. They used to be crazy expensive. They're about one divine a piece now. And for some reason, the elevated one was like four divines. So it just made sense from a uh, convenience perspective to buy elevated in this case. I like magic pack sides. A little interesting to put this one on here. I'm a big believer of it now uh, with the ghosting as well. And I'll explain that in just a second here when we get into the Atlas. Uh, final thing to look at is maps. All 8 mile corrupted map. Pretty well rolled for me. Uh, premium, the most premium rolls will be things like more magic monsters and beyond, uh, if possible. But of course, I'm not running beyond. I'm not focusing on it. It's not going to be on the Atlas uh, because beyond, while it does drop maps, it's really low percentage chance. I remember one time this league, I was testing it and it took me about 10 maps before I saw evidence of a beyond mob dropping a map. So I was pretty let down by that and decided uh, beyond, mm, not going to mess with it. But anyway, here we go with the Atlas. Uh, again, for one thing, you have to save a lot of points somewhere to put them in duplicated map chance. 
Which means uh, Beyond is uh, getting knocked off. I'm not doing Beyond because I need to invest the points somewhere. Beyond actually requires a lot of points invested to really fully maximize it. So it seems like a really good idea to just drop Beyond for it, even though it does drop some maps. Instead, uh, we're going all in the duplicated map chance, almost all points in there, and I'm going to be trying to fish for Delirium spawn chance randomly at a 48% plus 8% chance. Uh, same story with Legion, fishing for Legion too, uh, randomly. But uh, the core league mechanics here will be strong box and maps, basically. All of the duplicated effect non-unique non maps, uh, all of the quant wheel. All of the plus one map tier chant, except for these two here. This is a super min-maxed Atlas tree. I, I'm not taking these two points here because I actually have to waste a point to get there. So I'm trying to be super min-maxed with how I do it. I even went up the left side instead of the right side because I think I saved like one or maybe two points uh, doing that. Not wasting points here to get to extra legion chance. Just taking ones that require me to not sacrifice a single extra point uh, to get uh, percent extra legion chance or uh, delirium chance. With one point extra in Tormented Spirit Duration, I usually don't take this nowadays, but since uh, it was easy access for one point, I went ahead and took it. I, I like to have one point in here, if possible, for the ghosting part. And that'll basically spell how that's going. Oh yeah, um, no points in Diviners or Arcanus, purely going for Cartographer, because it will result in some extra maps. Um, yeah, so you can see all of the numbers here on the right. That'll be the Atlas. And then we'll jump into the costs, which actually we need to pull this up here first. I already went and loaded it up. Came out to 294 divines. This didn't factor in uh, the the fact that one round of my elevated sections is only getting a quarter usage. So I went in and manually reduced uh, the cost in there. Came out to 284 divines, 0.79, 2.85 divines per map. And the value of each map is set to 15 chaos. Now, this is maybe a little bit conservative uh, because when I go on the Discord to see uh, the maps, you know what? I go ahead and uh, do that actually. I think this channel here, uh, bulk eight mod maps want to sell. You can see that people are at least attempting to sell them randomly at 20, 25, 15 to 20 chaos a piece. Reg X, which I've talked about in previous videos, uh, 20, 25, even 30. And I don't know if they're selling them very well, but I've, at least lately, I've been able to sell them just easily at, say, um, 14 or 15 chaos apiece, random, and around 20 chaos apiece, reg X. So I think averaging uh, each map value at around 15 is perfectly fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I did go ahead and manually change wing scarabs because it, we're almost at about a two to one rate on wing scarabs. I'm still able to buy some at a rate of like three to seven or four to nine. Uh, some at 2 to 5, some at 2 to 1, changing the scarabs over. So the average cost of a wing scarab for me uh, is, is almost two to, uh, is almost uh, 1 divine per 2 scarabs at this point. So every scarab that I find, every scarab that I use, it's current time, uh, calculated at 100 chaos apiece. Pretty expensive, and that's driving a huge amount of the cost up. So that is the story on the investment cost. So you can see we're going to be tracking seven years, Apothecaries, Enlightens, Reliquary Keys, I guess, so, which needs to be knocked down to zero, actually. Whoops. Okay, fixed. Map one out of a hundred, and the currency over here I didn't mention is for Ambush on Map Device. Some people might be wondering what should you be putting Torment or Ambush on Map Device. I like Ambush on Map Device, especially if you're going elevated 600%. Uh, partially because there is a strong box that spawns ghosts already. And then we're already putting 12 ghosts or 13 ghosts on every map, which is kind of overkill, or at least it can create issues with trying to ghost in a speedy, efficient way. So I don't really like the idea of adding ghosts so much. Uh, I, I prefer to add strong boxes. It's just faster, mainly for efficiency reasons. I think they're about tied in value, though, overall. It's either four ghosts or four strong boxes. <laughs> All right, so here we go. I've been having so much fun this league uh, doing maximum juice. So so happy that uh, I'm able to justify farming this way, even with the crazy high investment cost. Got a cool new amulet over here. Uh, been testing out Great Wolf, uh, Biscos. This amulet I know is a big point of contention. I think I'm going to be sticking with this. Just so much increased damage, and it was was really. <laughs> 
interesting to craft this thing. Not very easy to do, um, surprisingly, even though it's only four mods. But anyway, that is the amulet I'll be switching to. Um, just as a added point, I went ahead and dropped uh, Elemental Weakness on hit in Whispers of Doom and then picked up the invert flip here and then dropped a cluster jewel and stuff so a couple of minor changes to the build we'll be coming out with a video on the build here pretty soon i want to wait till i get a winged or winged uh mirrored quiver winged quiver yeah how about that winged quiver sounds good to me we're gonna need a map right went ahead and started off with a nice map here to 29 uh, more ma mon magic monsters would be super premium for this pretty nice pack size these maps do not have quality on them you might think running the compass to put quality on the map uh would be good it's nowhere near as good as adding magic pack size whether you have this mod on it or not i can promise you that uh so i'm, I'm not a big fan of that compass i go ahead and run for convenience uh maps that don't have any quality on them you can corrupt and make your own maps if you want that is pain on the wrist pain on the hands and pain on the time it's not something I really want to do, so this is why I like to do. I like to farm my own maps, just have them instantly and be able to regex my way to victory really fast and smooth and just keep, spend more time in maps, farming maps, basically. So we're going to be going ambush. You know, you could put... I, I don't really know what ghosting does with beasts on the map because a lot of beast minions don't drop anything really. Alva, again, not good because it draws ghosts down below. Uh, so we're just not going to be doing any master missions here. Uh, but anyway... Here we go, map number one. Question in chat, is Metamorph profitable? Yeah, check out Palsteron. He makes some nice Metamorph videos. So we're going to be doing a weapon swap here with uh, my current shield. Really like it. Uh, Stasis Prism, by the way, is really good, really strong. But if you have this, a shield like this, I think it's really necessary in most cases. Okay, just like I normally do, kind of go up uh, one of the wings, try to find some ghosts, just start ghosting stuff. Oh yeah, I forgot, I'm now... I'm gonna let me grab a couple of ghosts here. Try to kill some mobs that I didn't ghost. I try to spawn the influence in advance, because I noticed before doing that, I would sometimes pick up ghosts and not actually use all 50 copies of the touch buff before the ghost buff expired. It's kind of a huge waste there, actually. So I think it's smart to just go ahead and unlock the influence. Or you can open strong boxes in advance, but I like waiting. I'm a big proponent of waiting on that. Oh, that one's already in a copy there. So I got two ghosts here that I've had to skip so far. I'll come back for them later. Kind of have to remember where they're at. It can be it's a bit of a memory game now, the ghosting thing. I prefer not to spend more than two minutes doing this, which reminds me I need to start the timer on this. Uh, wow, getting very unlucky with the same copy ghosts. Let's see if I can grab... Let's see, there was one... That... Really? Shield charge in my way to avoid more reliquary key. I actually do enough damage to kill things with shield charge. is kind of nice. And... It helps me get the endurance charges, get the fortify. It's very reliable. And, and, and uh, yeah, the more I increase and improve my gear, the more of an impact that makes. I might be missing one ghost here. Uh, I'm not sure. We're going to call it there. Probably missing one ghost. Anyway, Delirium did spawn automatically on the map. So here we go. We'll do the necklace swap. And, of course, usually I'm forcing Delhi on the map. But uh, today, I'm just going to get it about 50% of the time. 56% of the time, I think. Oh, oh, God. What is that choice? Okay. Uh, I, I can't turn down 40% chance to do maps on this farm. That's pretty funny, though. <laughs> okay, we do have favorited slots open. Okay. Just making sure. A little disappointed I haven't seen a map drop yet. <laughs> Come on, show me proof of a map. It's been a while since I farmed maps. Hey, okay, there we go. We're good. Didn't brick my client. Oh yeah, no, no beyond. <laughs> maps have a pretty decent chance of dropping here in the back end with Delirium increasing the quantity of drops, uh, having its own separate multiplier. Up oh, there was a ghost, uh, but 
this is super low to do the entire ghosted area and get only one map. That's actually really bad. Uh, but we'll see the value of strong boxes here immediately. <laughs> yeah, void point key. I think I made my money back on the void point key. All right, it'll be okay. Okay, well, these maps will actually be a little faster uh, because I'm not even worrying about beyond, I guess. Some of the maps do have beyond. Wow. Nice. Obviously, this map, I, I'm making it look like strong boxes are worth way more than ghosts, but that's not really true. I, I've had many maps where I got like 15 or so maps to drop before I even started opening strong boxes. So it's just one of those things. RNG be RNG. You notice in the atlas that I didn't take all of the map duplication nodes. I feel like 8% chance to spawn a, a legion is actually worth more than 1% chance to duplicate maps. Because the legions are, first of all, the legion's going to increase divination card drops where 1% chance to dupe maps is not, obviously. And I think just the legion's going to result in more map drops anyway. So to me, it was worth it to give myself a little more chance to spawn a legion each map. Wait, how did I get a non-corrupted Crimson Temple map? Must have been like a deli reward. Okay, uh, it'll be easier to loot these maps than usual because uh, hardly any uniques are going to drop <laughs> compared to what I normally see. I like my weapon swap for the beginning for ghosting and then also for the looting process. You know, this is map is done in less than five minutes. Oh. Okay. That's it. Aside from the Voidborn Reliquary key, it's pretty bad. I think uh, this number of maps is... Mm, no, not even average. I, I'm expecting to see more than this number of maps. Let's see. How many did we get? Eight mod maps. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be getting more than that on the average map. I don't know. We'll see at the end what it comes down to. Two hundred fortunates, huh? We got red star I didn't see earlier. What could it be? Mega off screened. Look at it last. Could be an apothecary. Could be. Could be. Could be. Could be. Could be. Oh, oh, Voidborn Reliquary key again. Ooh. Well, that's a pretty good showing of them already. Yeah, that uh, Sanctum must be really good for you. For farming the sextants to do the juice. What? A second one? Oh my god. Two reliquary keys in one map. Dude, it's been a while since I've seen that. Wow. Hope oh, you have a good stream? Alright, thanks. Thanks for stopping by. Ooh, duped seven years. There you go, a little adios gift for you. 33% chance.
thought I was too slow to open a full legion on the Crimson Temple. Even when I swapped a tornado shot. Oh, cartographer strong enough coming in heavy. Woo! Woo! -hoo. There you go. Now, it still drops maps that are not Crimson Temple, but... And they'll drop as currency, but uh, it still has a... It still obeys the favorited system, so it's still like, you know, a hundred times more likely than it's going to drop. I mean, probably every map that drops is at least a 50% chance to be a Crimson Temple. If this keeps up, I'm expecting to have more than that. I think I can push maybe 2,000. 2,000 maps out of 100 map. I might be able to hit that, I'm not sure. Ah, map conversion. With an Enlighten. First map conversion off of a rare mob. Occasionally they'll convert into maps. And the nice thing is the Reliquary of Scarab doesn't affect those drops, so... Get the full thing. Now, I'll only pick up the high-quality maps, which would be the four Crimson Temples and one Cemetery. Uh, I guess I'll pick up a Carcass, too. Somebody want that. Okay, gonna deliberately cancel the deli mirror because I need to farm the ghosts right now. This is very tricky. This is the hardest thing to do in, in ghosting. You can easily get your get your ass killed trying to do this. So good. So good. Oh. Still a uh, pack of mobs up. Whoops. Dang. What? Dead ghost. Divine orb. Hmm. So many divine orbs. Definitely getting way more divines than exalts, I think. Two divines, one screen. Nice. And the enlightened. Oh, God. Where's that other card, though? Imagine with a reliquary what that would have been. Holy hell. Like, I can't really think of another league that I'd, I'd be even less interested in. As far as the style and type of league mechanic. Just not my thing. Well, I said it had been a while. Looky what we have here. That was early too. Early in the map. Well, if I can't get an apothecary to drop... 
No, not dupe divines. I would like a basic currency duplicated altar, please. Sooner than later. Thank you very much. Might be 20. Maybe. Probably not even that. Oh. It's a few divine orbs. It's a few. Hmm. Alright. Wow, one enlightened. Why do, why do I keep doing that? Stop dropping that card, man. If you are going to drop it, at least dupe it. Dupe Path Gary. Let's see. Oh, what? Almost as it happens. Yeah, I don't know. I have a problem investing into things like that. Like sitting on it or whatever. I've got a nice map conversion there. Because I want to liquidate what I have for seven years. I want to liquidate it so I can upgrade my character so I can farm faster and get even more currency. And I think, you know, in the long run, uh, I come out for the better for that. Especially if, like, I don't care at all about standard and. It's just all for the here and the now. Alright, let's do this uh, strong box here. Here, what I'm going to do is... Do that in advance. Make sure I don't die there. Oh, I died. I probably got like a hundred buffs out out of like, two, I think I had five ghosts in me though, so a little unfortunate. Should have put on the amulet, I guess. Well, anyway. God, I'm seeing a lot of maps. <laughs> what in the world? Ah! I'm not dropping what I want to drop. Well, my time to shine. The late bloomer session. How much do I've invested in my guy? Uh, around five mirrors. Maybe more, a little more. Oh, so good. So good. Oh my God, I want to go work out right now. What in the world? Oh. Wow, that's some pre-workout if I ever felt it. Wow. All natural. Dude, the adrenaline and dopamine just... Just 
sucked right in through my head. It was all ready to go. It was like packing full of those chemicals. Long dry spell. Literally sweating right now. It felt so good. Something like 80 maps, no apothecary. It's supposed to get one every 25-ish maps. Now let's drop another couple ones. How about that? I mean, I, I got a 72% chance to do it. We might as well just do it again. Same map. Four apothecaries, one map. Anyone? Is it calculating I'm always freezing? Uh, yeah, I think it says enemies frozen. Well, hello there. Red star off screen. Oh! Ah! Oh, that guy kid! One man brings down No dupes, though. Wait, really? 76% chance to do basic currency? <laughs> and just like that, I'm right back on par. Three apothecaries and 80 maps is actually basically right. That's where I should be. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Got him. Never give up. Chris woke up. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I mean, you know, RNG's RNG, congrats. For every one of you out there, there's 20 sorry souls who couldn't find an apothecary in, well, in 20 maps anyway. This guy found an apothecary in three maps. Puggers. Puggers. Aren't you guys happy for him? Not really. <laughs> Not. Are you happy for me? It happened. Four apothecaries in the bag. Oh, I knew you were going to try and take credit for that RNG. So predictable. Why do people always do that, anyway? Try to pawn off their RNG like that. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of maps in the back. Dare I say, this is a pretty good map. A map, wow, I went to look at my thing for a second and then died. 30% chance to dupe maps. 0% chance to dupe apothecaries. Oh well. Damn. Oh. So my eyes are like, huh? <laughs> Stacked up. <laughs> Duped seven years.
No! Oh, not like this. Double duped seven years. <laughs> Four seven years and 30 seconds. Whoa, Whoa dude. Whoa. <laughs> Let me do it one more time. One more time just for you guys. I'll do it. Do it. I mean, my seven years were actually low. They're a little bit low. I don't think they're low anymore, though. <laughs> Not now. Probably about just right. I think they're just right. Here we go, everyone. That was quite the ride. Wild ride in the end. All those apothecaries coming in last second. I was really starting to get a little worried. And I was going to have to normalize the results. But now I don't even have to because four apothecaries is almost exactly how many I should get. Uh, based on all the testing I've done this league. And you can see that uh, here in a second with the drop rates of some of the other cards. Let's start uh, just straight into the POE stack with the tally here. We got the values and the breakdowns. Kind of look at the macro view here. We got 337.8 uh, divines in card of value. 120 divines in maps. So we'll figure out in a moment how many maps were dropped in fact. So that's pretty crazy, 120. And that, again, that's uh, 15 chaos per eight mod Crimson Temple. 66 divines in currency. So I did get lucky and got 40 raw divine orbs. 15 of that came from a divine altar. So still got 25 divine, authentically, I guess. Fragments and then scarabs, not nearly as many scarabs. And that's because I got way fewer scarab conversions. And then there were as good when I got them and uh, that is mainly because without beyond and without delirium half the time gonna get way fewer rare monsters spawned in any given map also less chance to spawn legion and expedition and ritual and all that anyway okay it all kind of falls off from there uh, but of course you know that's the major thing major big point here 120 divines of my investment was covered in maps at least you know here is the top-down breakdown. We got four apothecaries, 27 seven years, and it's basically the rate of apothecary to, to seven years is around seven to one. Uh, maybe closer to eight to one, but somewhere in that neighborhood. So you can see, came really close. Uh, question in chat, did I pick up gamblers? I did not pick up gamblers this time. Uh, then we got the 40 divines. 1,841 8 mod corrupted at Crimson Temple, and those are all 8 mod corrupted. So they will either sell or I'll use them. And they will sell for basically a minimum of 15 chaos a piece. Uh, I might sell some for cheaper just to offload them all at once to save myself the headache. Uh, but my the initial uh, the initial sell process will definitely involve uh, selling them for higher. And then, you know, as they dwindle down in number, I'll just offload the rest basically. 501 sextants, wow. 33 Enlightens. Enlightens came out pretty high this time, but not crazy high. So there you can see uh, the Enlightened to Apothecary is maybe about 32 to 1. Or sorry, 32. Uh, 8 to 1. So yeah, right around 4 Apothecaries uh, based on the Enlightened and 7 years count. So it looks, looks to be right about where it is, where it should be. A lot of exalted orbs, also an exalted altar, and yeah, then just kind of down there. Nine dragon hearts, a little low there. Some stacked decks, uh, a few uniques, but not many. Definitely not many. Just kind of scroll through here and let you see the whole picture. And if you want to to somehow verify this, all of this loot dropping, there's a link in the description of the YouTube video for a Twitch VOD, uh, uncut version of the VOD part one so this will be split in two parts because I did all this in two days all right there it is that's the breakdown that's everything on the results so now I'm gonna try to set up everything and do a gambling portion then we'll give some final thoughts not a whole lot to gamble here since not that many uniques and still not that many stacked decks actually right okay uh whoops actually forgot to finished the calculations on the map so i got the gambling portion ready but uh real quick first we're gonna figure out exactly how much currency was made in this so i got the brand new number here 
130,000 something chaos. Quite a bit. So just take that number, get the more accurate number here. Four, three, eight, divided by, again, 230. Wow, this divine orb just stayed there the whole time. So a gross of 567.12 divines. Again, that's uh, with all the maps being at 15 chaos apiece. Uh, then we take this minus 284. And that is the net. It's funny how the net comes out almost the same as the investment. And then we take it divided by maps. And this is the div per map, approximately, that I earned. So a lot of people want to know how much uh, currency per map are you making. And of course, that's with apothecaries in play. In a second here, we'll look at apothecaries as if I got zero to see if I even came out uh, positive. But actually, um, I can just take... I can figure that out right quick. Well, I'll go ahead and finish this out. 282.33 divided by 9. So it's a lot faster this time. It was 13 hours to do the farm I did last time. But that's because I had uh, my character was a little weaker. I was, I was a little slower. Uh, Beyond was on every map. And Delirium was on every map. And I was doing uh, things like Harvest. was doing uh, a lot of rituals. Legion spawn more often. Expedition spawn more. Everything, just everything on the map I did. There's a lot different farm this time. It's way faster uh, for a variety of reasons. And that means I came out to a wow, whopping uh, 31 divines an hour. And the normalized would be basically the same. Because uh, maybe a tiny bit less. I, I don't know. May maybe like 30 divines an hour. Uh, because it's almost uh, four path carries in a map at least. So somewhere around there. Uh, and I'm a little surprised to see it that good, but uh, that has something to do with the Divine Orb Altar and, you know, just a pretty good RNG all around. Uh, but it has nothing to do with the map drops being good RNG. I mean, that's going to be the number of maps I get almost every time anyway. And I recall uh, doing this test a while back that I got somewhere between 18 and 19 maps per map. So it's exactly where I kind of expected it to be. Let's really quickly see what it would be if I got zero apothecary. So the apothecary is still worth uh, what? Uh, oh, sixty-seven point five. Okay, the apothecary's actually gone down a little bit. This is seven point five times four. And well, wouldn't you know it? Uh, it's actually the you know, the opposite. So yeah, positive twelve. 0.3 divines an hour or 12.3 divines <laughs> coming out to around one divine an hour is what I would have got if I had continued that terrible off awful streak of no apothecaries would have been z almost zero still positive though uh, yeah still positive uh, but without the divine orb altar I guess it would have been technically negative maybe all right so that is the results for the currency per hour so to me it is yeah, up, up to at least 30 divines an hour. Um, yeah, I, I guess uh, my average would be somewhere around 25, 30 divines an hour. Somewhere in there. Or more. Maybe. So long as the price of the, you know, the maps holds and the apothecary doesn't tumble way, way, way down. That's where it looks like it is. So remarkably high. Um, higher than any number I get with reliquary farming, ironically. So... I don't know, we'll see if I can change that a little bit in the follow-up 1000 Crimson Temple map, but that'll be part of final thoughts. Let's finish out the gamble, which I have nice and set up, ready to go. We got six Voidborn Reliquary keys. I did get one replica Dragon Fang ID and then 83 stack decks, so we'll just knock this out real quick. See if I actually made more currency than I thought I would. Voidborn Reliquary Keys I can sell for three Divines apiece. I really don't want to put them in the grinder, but, you know, I do it for you guys. So. Makes for more interesting, entertaining content, I guess. Pulled a Doctor card out somewhat recently on... A session with the stack deck at the end, but nothing really good here. The fortunate, mm, yeah, it came out down, I guess. All right, 
uh, I already have all of the uniques and they're already all corrupted. So without Reliquary Scarab, with all my rarity in a hundred maps, this is this is it. <laughs> That's all I got. So it's totally different uh, when the Reliquary Scarab comes to play. Let's see what I have. I already corrupted them. So I do have a couple implicit, so that's good to see. Alright, nothing there. Nope. Nope. Reduced poison duration. Ah, not all that impressive. But I mean, technically a winner. Okay. Cast speed meganoids. I don't think so. Nope. Uh, nothing on the void batteries. Grave mines, projectile gems. Nope. R Rhythm Guardian. Trap that. No. Nothing on the Biscos. Cena's channel touch duration. Oh, we got a couple of heat shivers, so let's see. Projectile and increased effective shot. Nope. Wait, what? No, okay, that, that's a fluke, I guess. Ah, nothing. Basically nothing. Well, this is my only item that really improved in value. <laughs> Replica Dragon Fang, here we go. Summon Raging Spirits. This actually is worth something, I think. Uh, let me see here. Yeah. Divine Orb minimum. Yay. Actually worth something. Amazing. And I got really crappy rolls, so yeah. Basic one divine. That means the thing left is to send these... Reliquary keys through the grinder. Starting with one out of six. Pray, gotta pray. Ooh. Uh. Not very good. That's so bad. I don't even know what it is. My loot filter is set up for mapping only, so I do sometimes have to check. Oh, cold iron point. Cold iron point. Well, you know, that's not all that great, I'm afraid. In fact, I don't even really notice the difference in color. Not going to be worth much. Number three. This is rare? I got a rare drop? How do, how do I get a rare? What is that? Wait, is this rare? Oh, eternity sh- <laughs> I thought it was rare. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, I, I was- I was- my mind was blown a little bit there for a second. Okay. Eternity Shroud? No. Not actually going to be worth anything. Although it looks kind of cool with all the different overlays on the UI. Does anybody want anything out of this except Mage Blood at this point? Is this one with nothing? One with nothing. Well, I mean, that at least has some cell value. Or he can. A pink one with nothing. You thought you had a yellow one with nothing. How about a pink one with nothing? Any takers? Number five. Wow. Wow. TS with claw shield. Well, it's a weapon swap. Here. Go weapon swap now. <laughs> Iron ring. Whoa. Oh my goodness, yeah, somebody mentioned uh, corrupting. You know, we'll corrupt both of these. 
Well, crap, the final last ditch effort. Nope. Nope. Well, all gone. That was a really awful gambling session, I gotta say. Got almost nothing for that. Uh, definitely lost a lot of money with the cards. Anyway, uh, that's fine. So now we're done, and we've got to give you final thoughts on this farm. The biggest thing I like about this farm is that uh, it's incredibly lucrative, and it doesn't really put much emphasis on magic find gear. Like the maps drop regardless of what stats you have on your gear at all, and then the divination cards only look at quantity. And then, you know, there's diminished returns anyway. So anybody with like 30, 40, 50% quant could do this farm, even with wing scarabs, perhaps. I have 90% quant on my gear for this uh, for this run. POB is linked in the description, of course. Uh, so that helps, obviously, but not in not in a crazy way. You know, if you have like 50 or 40, 50% quant, like you're going to get almost the same amount of cards as I would at 90%, believe it or not, because of a diminished return. Uh, but anyway... This is, you know, a great farm for anyone who doesn't want to have to push their build to the max on the magic finding stuff. What I do in the follow-up with a thousand Crimson Temple maps, that'll be much more demanding on the gear. I'll have to, you know, focus more on quantity and rarity uh, to get the most out of that. Uh, but the major downside to this farm, it's got to mess with the TFT uh, on the Discord. And you got to, you know, find the sellers, buyers, you got to take the private messages, the regex, you got to do all this, that. Uh, you can sell them all pretty quick and cheap and easy for, you know, a baseline, undercut the entire market. You could do that uh, for pretty much for the price that I set them at, actually. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people, of course, are going to rightfully uh, try to sell a bunch of maps for 20, 25, 30 chaos apiece, as will I uh, initially, uh, because, you know, there's a lot of maps in here. It got beyond for one thing. So any map in here that has beyond roll on it is probably worth at least 30 chaos uh, in that marketplace. Just, you know, for example. And then, you know, anyone that's got like magic, more magic monsters, those are also going to be worth similar uh, these days. So pretty interesting. It will take me a long time to sift through all of the maps, but I think she'll get everything ready. And we'll move on to the final big farm of the league. Be 1,000 Crimson Temple maps, Reliquary Divination Farming. Uh, very anxious to prove uh, just how good ghosting is on both fronts. I think it's an even bigger deal on uh, Rarity of Farmed. Already hit so many Tier 0 uniques this league. Uh, so we're going to see a lot. It'll be interesting to compare how many Tier 0s I hit uh, compared to last time I did it with Gilded Scarabs. Uh, it would be way higher, I suspect. And I'd honestly be disappointed if I don't find both a Headhunter and a Mage Blood in that 1,000 map test, but that's going to be in a future video. Uh, so enjoy this one. I hope you enjoyed this one, and I hope you enjoyed all the highlights that were really interesting. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. That's it for this video. See you guys next time.